So I just upgraded from the G7 to the GH5 Mark II. And today I'm gonna to be telling you the difference. So before I start, you can actually look all of this up online, but I just wanna show you kind of like a physical look at the differences. So one of the main differences is that the GH5 Mark II is bigger than the G7. It is about 1.6 pounds, while the G7 comes in right under a pound at 0.9 pounds. And you know, you could definitely tell it's smaller. But I will add, having a bigger camera can add some more stability too. Also, the GH5 Mark II is gonna have a higher resolution LED screen at 1.840K dots, while the G7 is 1.04K dots. So one of the things that bugged me the most on the G7 was that the SD card slot was at the bottom of the camera. So if you had it on a tripod and you need to switch your SD cards, it made it really hard. But now on the GH5 Mark II, it's on the side of the camera. So if it's on your tripod, then you can still put in your SD cards. On top of that, this also has dual SD card slots which have multiple functions. So if you ran out of video storage, then you can have a relay to the next card and you, you know there's way more other settings, uh, but you can have two SD cards at a time inside the camera. So on the side of the camera, the GH5 also has a mic port just like the G7, but this time it has an additional headphone jack so you can monitor audio when playing. It has a full HDMI port so you can connect to your TV or computer. And then it has a USB-C port which you can use to charge the camera or connect to the computer. Also, before we start off, just let me let this be said that I am a noob with this camera. I've been using the G7 since 2017. If some like, G7 clips turn out to be better than the GH5. Just, just kind of keep that in mind, but you know, it's still a comparison. But yes, I still do have a bunch of learning to do with this camera, so just keep that in mind, I'm still learning. This is a test on the G7, and this is with the kit lens, so this is the 14 to 42 millimeter lens. This is in 4K 30 frames per second, and this is what it looks like. And then in a little bit, I'm about to switch to the GH5 Mark II, and I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so this is now on the GH5 Mark II. This is the same 14 to 42 millimeter kit lens. This is in 4K 30 frames per second. So this is what it looks like pretty much in direct sunlight right in front of me. All right, another video test, but this time we're on the Lumix 12 to 35 millimeter lens. So this is a slight upgrade from the kit lens. Um, this is what it looks like in 4K 30. Um, and it cannot go up to 4K 60. You're maxed out at 4K 30 on the G7. But on the GH5 Mark II, you can actually get up to 60 frames per second in 4K. So now this is on the GH5 Mark II. This is in 60 frames per second, so you can see it's clear in the movement because it's getting more frames per second. So this is actually in 4K. That's one of the main reasons I want to upgrade, just so I can get 4K 60 frames per second. Speaking of slow motion, if you actually go into your settings and go to variable frame rate and switch that on, you can actually get up to 180 frames per second in 1080 HD. Um, you just have to make sure you're in a record quality that's eligible with the VFR format. So just make sure you have the MOV file format and your record quality says VFR available. So you can see here, I'm in slow motion. It actually slows everything down for you in camera. You don't have to do any editing, but it doesn't have autofocus. So that's why I was out of focus here. If you look here, I was more in focus and you can see me do this crazy thing. So um, also one thing, it does not capture sound when you film in this format too. So this is kind of like the standard profile and honestly it's not the best representation of this lens because like the sun is just directly on me so you don't really get the blurry background. But this is what it looks like standard. Um, so you, one thing you can do on here is you do have a log format. So we can do V-log and then you can actually color correct that in post. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. All right, so now this is in the V-log profile. So when you're originally seeing this, it's gonna look like a lot colorless and whatever, but what you can actually do is go back in post and actually edit the colors back in. One of the things that I use, this is like not a non-sponsored video, I use Cinematch. Uh, you can just match your camera settings and the profile you're using, and then it just automatically applies those colors. And then you should see now, like, you know, now it's more colorful back to normal. And then you can even try to add like color grading to it once you've uh, fixed the color correction. But this basically just allows you to get, you know, more details in the shadows and highlights without it being like too contrasty. And now we're back on the Panasonic G7. And one of the settings that they have, they don't really have like an exact log format, but they have Cine Like D, which is very similar to it. So this is what Cine Like D looks like right now with no color adjustments. And then once we do some color, correction to it. I don't know if Cinematch has it, but if it does, I'll put it like in the description somewhere. Um, but this is what it looks like with the color back now. And then once you do that, you know, you can add your color grading or whatever you want to do with it. But you do have that option on the G7. It's just not like an exact log format. So going into picture profiles further, so you may have noticed that it looks really contrasty on standard, at least when I was outside in direct sunlight. 
So Panasonic cameras are kind of common for this. So you can go in your settings and actually just fine tune them or choose a different picture profile. So this currently, this is what the standard profile looks with no adjustments. Now this is what the natural profile looks like also with no adjustments made. So that's kind of like a common one that a lot of people like to use on the GH5. Now this is back to standard, but I did minus three contrast and minus three sharpness. So it doesn't look like too contrasty. And then now it's back on natural, but this time it's with minus three contrast and minus three sharpness. So if you want to get kind of like even more detail than what natural would already get. So make sure you just like play around with your picture profiles. You can even go to the vlog format, but just know like that plays a big role in I guess like how your video or pictures will look. So just kind of like testing them out before you just really go out on a shoot or something. I'm still learning this camera, so I still have a lot to learn. And then obviously this is what the vlog format looks like without any adjustments made. And then if you make your adjustments in post, you can bring that color back in and then, you know, just kind of do whatever you want with it after that. One of the cool things about the GH5 Mark II is that there is a focus pull setting. So if you go there and set one to three points, you can transition from multiple points. So you can see here, I'm just using the autofocus to set my first point. I go to the second one. Uh, go to my friend's wife in the back and then autofocus on her. And now when I go back, there is actually a focus transition speed. So how fast you want to transition between those two points. And then once you're ready to start, um, you can just, you know, click on the two points you set and it'll automatically transition from those points. So let's say if I start off at two and I press one, it's going to transition back to my friend in the hoodie. All right, so one of the cool things you could do is you can actually film in 6K anamorphic. So it's technically like a four by three ratio. So you have to kind of crop in, but I was gonna get some footage first. So this is in 4K. We got Cameron right there, just standing there. So that's it in 4K. I'm gonna let that film for a little bit. All right, and now I actually, I have it set to on like my custom dial here. So if I actually twist it to my first custom setting, um, and now it's in 6K. Uh, so let me actually turn on back to vlog just so it can be an even comparison so if you look right now there's like a border on the screen um so it it basically makes a frame of the 16 by 9 ratio so you know kind of like where it's filming with the 6k because otherwise you would get like more room above i think it's like the same ratio uh horizontally but you get like more vertical uh resolution so this is what it looks like now let me start recording so this is in 6k and basically in post um, you'll just have to kind of like scale it up so that it can fit. So it'll be kind of more maybe like like a 5K-ish kind of look um, since you have to zoom in a little bit. But you can get a little more resolution uh, just by using this setting. It's just that this little border right here will kind of help you frame it for a 16 by 9 ratio film format. All right, so this is a quick little test on the in-body image stabilization on the GH5 Mark II. The G7 does not have that. Also, I'm filming on the 12 to 35 millimeter lens, which has optical image stabilization. So you see I'm walking around, hopefully it's smooth, kind of walking at a decent pace. Um, let's see if I can get a little, little jog real quick. Let's see how that works. Hopefully it's not like too shaky. Um, but yeah, that's how it looks like with the in-body image stabilization in-body image stabilization and the optical image stabilization so i'm gonna maybe see how that like looks like on the g7 with both the kit lens and this 12 to 35 millimeter lens all right so now i'm on the g7 this does not have in-body image stabilization but the lens right now the 12 to 35 millimeter has the optical image stabilization so this is what it looks like walking at a decent pace again right now i'm gonna start jogging see how that looks and that's what it looks like on the G7. But now let's see what it looks like on the kit lens without all that stuff. Now we're on the G7 with the kit lens. So this is the 14 to 42 millimeter lens. <laughs> all right, now we're back on the G7. Uh, this is with the kit lens, the 14 to 42 millimeter. So there's no in-body image stabilization, no optical image stabilization. So this is like walking at a decent pace, right? You might get a little shakes, I don't know. Um, now we're gonna jog in the same place that we were before. This is what it looks like while I'm jogging probably a little more shaky and not as stable but it doesn't mean it's a bad camera or anything um you know it's still really good in my opinion all right and this is the final test uh so that we're back on the gh5 mark ii but now we're with the kit lens the 14 to 42 millimeter lens um so this is what it looks like you know walking at a normal pace you got the in-body image stabilization but no optical image stabilization right and then we're gonna hit a quick jog in that same spot hopefully the in-body image stabilization does a pretty good job with uh, stabilizing it. 
So yeah, I think that was a pretty good test for stabilization. Really good stuff on the GH5 Mark II. So now just to list out some more features that the GH5 Mark II has. So on paper, the autofocus is gonna be much better on the GH5 Mark II. The GH5 Mark II has 225 focus points while the G7 has 49. Also the GH5 Mark II has animal eye tracking focus. So let's say you got a dog, a cat, or any type of other animal, then you can actually track onto the animal and use autofocus with it. Also when recording video, you won't have any record limits. That was one of the main reasons I also wanted to get this because sometimes I skateboard a lot and just have my camera rolling. On um, the G7, sometimes you'd be limited to about like 30 minutes of footage before it would just stop. But with the GH5 Mark II, you have unlimited recording based on you know how long your SD cards will last for. Also, the GH5 Mark II is gonna be weather sealed while the G7 is not. So if you're ever shooting in harsh conditions, like maybe like a little bit of rain or snow, then the GH5 should be good for the most part. And also note that both these cameras are micro four thirds sensors, but the GH5 Mark II has a 20 megapixel sensor while the G7 has a 16 megapixel sensor. And also you may not be able to tell from the videos, but the GH5 Mark II has 10 bit color capability when recording. And I believe almost all the shots I shot on the GH5 were using 10 bit color. Um, while most cameras will shoot in 8-bit. So pretty much this just gives you more color range, but I feel like it's kind of hard to tell if you, you know, if you're not really looking for it. Hope you enjoyed. That was just some of the features in comparison with the GH5 Mark II compared to the G7. Really happy on the upgrade. I still have a lot of learning to do, so make sure to check out some videos that are posted after this to kind of see more GH5 Mark II footage. And if you want to see more future videos like this, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, turn on the post notifications so you can be notified whenever there's a new video. And if you like this video, I would recommend checking out this video right here. Make sure you check that out.